everyone, welcome back to my channel. My name's Erica. It's time for another crafty podcast. So today's podcast is gonna be a lot of fun. I have a lot of new projects to share with you. I have some in progress works, some things I had to rip out and start over. So I'm gonna share all of that with you. Let's go ahead and dive right in. And we're gonna start off with my favorite notion of the month. So we all make mistakes when we're sewing or doing crafts. And one of my favorite notions is gonna be this clover seam ripper. This guy is literally one of my favorite seam rippers. I'm not exactly sure why, I just love the handle on it. And then that point right there is nice and um, sharp. And so I just love it. And then of course this little grippy thing kind of helps as well. And so you just, Rip, rip, rip. I know there's a lot of brands out there, but this one just happens to be my favorite. I will make sure to link all of the things that I'm mentioning in the video below. So just click show more or that little drop down arrow and you'll find links for everything that I'm talking about. But my featured product is my little clover seam ripper. This is probably the most used item in my sewing room. All right, so let's talk quilting. So most of you know, if you follow me on this channel or on my social media that I just released my Oh Hey Pumpkin fall quilt pattern. So I just wanted to get give it another little feature here and just showcase how cute this quilt is. So this quilt is nice and big. It finishes at 80 by 80. Of course, you can add some extra borders if you want to increase that size a little bit. So they are available in print and PDF now. And I just think it turned out so cute. All of your requirements are gonna be on the back here. And then if you've never done one of my patterns before. Let's see if I can kind of give you a quick glimpse of the inside without sharing too much. Um, all of this information is all colorful, step-by-step -step written instructions with graphic illustrations for every single step. So they're really easy to put together. I don't actually even read the instructions at this point. I just follow my pictures and put it together that way. But this quilt pattern is so easy. Now there are a lot of pieces in it, as you can see, um, but I honestly, nothing is super hard. It's all straight sta um, standard piecing. The hardest part about it is gonna be this sashing right here, this little dashed sashing. The only thing that really makes that hard, and it's not even really difficult at all, um, is just that once you cut those apart, it's really stretchy. And so you kind of have to finagle it to you know, fit your row if your stitching is off at all. So that's really the hardest thing. Everything else is straightforward piecing. Definitely one of my favorite fall quilts. I will link everything behind me as well below. So the one on the wall is my vintage fall quilt. And then the one on the bottom of the ladder right here is my my farmhouse fall pattern. And then of course I've got my September truck of the month up on the wall. All that will be linked below. Um, but I just thought this was such a fun pattern. I wanted to share that with you. And of course I have all the rest of my fall stuff behind me. All right, while we're talking about quilting, let's talk about this year's quilty ornaments. So I wasn't actually gonna do another set, but a lot of you requested them. And then I kind of got inspired by a red and white Christmas theme. So that's what I'm gonna be doing this year. And I did finish our quilty ornaments for this year. And I'm calling these the classic quilty ornaments because they are all based on classic or traditional quilt blocks. So these are all minis. They finish at three and a half inches by three and a half inches. And I will go through and show you all of them. And these are going to coordinate with my um, classic stitchy ornaments as well. And so I think you'll see some familiar quilt blocks here. These are so fun to put together. One of my main tips on these, because they are small, is to use some Mary Ellen's Best Press or starch on your fabric before um, you cut out your pieces. That's really gonna help you keep these guys um, nice and accurate and just make your piecing a lot easier because the pieces are kind of small. Now there are a lot of ways to finish these. I just finished mine off pretty simple. Um, I just wanted these to just be cute little traditional ornaments. I did use a little rickrack for my hanger. This is Lori Holt's uh, quarter inch rickrack in cloud. So this is the small version. Her other one is I think a half an inch. It was just way too big, but you can use any ribbon. I think twine would also be really cute. The other thing I did is I just took the finished uh, quilt block and I just put it on a little piece of batting and I did a little machine quilting and so hopefully you can kind of see it there. Um, I didn't do a whole lot of machine quilting. I think on this one I just ran stitches along here and then along the sides and I think that was pretty much it for this one. I just kept it pretty simple just enough to attach the batting to the quilt top and then I sewed it to the backing right sides together leaving a little opening on my side 
turned them right side out, and then just stitched right around that edge just to close them off. So I think they turned out really cute. I will insert some footage here of them on the tree because um, I always think that really kind of shows them off and what they actually look like. Um, but here they are, super cute, and these are available in my shop now. Now I think we will be doing, or I know we will be doing a sew along for these because I've had so many requests for that. We did that last year and a lot of you did the sew along with us and it was so much fun to see everyone's ornaments and also how you finish them because a lot of people finished differently. You could definitely bind these, although they're so tiny, I think the binding might kind of cut off the um, tips of some of the stars and so that's why I didn't do binding, but you can just have fun with these and um, I actually, really enjoy making these tiny blocks. They go fast, that you have to be a little more precise, but they really come together pretty quickly and so they're a lot of fun. So these are the 2022 classic quilty ornaments. Now I did have a new tutorial come up and that is for this cute little pencil pouch. So I thought I would share that here and I have a little sneak peek for the next one that's be, gonna be coming soon. But this was perfect. My daughter needed something, a little pencil pouch to take with her to her options program this year. And so this one is really cute. And then I just did a little embellishing with this ribbon right here on top of the zipper because I thought that was adorable. This fabric is, I think it's called Little Red from Stacy Itsu. And it just was so much fun and then the gingham is I think a Lori Holt print. It was for my stash, so I apologize, I don't know. And then this cute little aqua um, zipper and then the ribbon embellishment right here was also a Lori Holt, um, I think it's called Vintage Trim or it's from that trim series that she has. The lining on this bag is actually a fig tree print and I think this is from um, their stitched line. I, ugh, I'm not 100% sure, um, but I'm sure if you just search for like fig tree, I think it's their stitched line. Anyways, it's got this text print on it. So it's perfect for lining for bags, really cute. This is definitely a beginner friendly project. Um, I made this one and while I was doing this, my daughter made one as well. And I show that in the video tutorial for this. Um, she did a little black and yellow one and it was adorable. So very easy, she's about 13. She does know how to sew, so that helps, but it is still really beginner friendly. So I will link the tutorial for this fun little pencil pouch below. Now, because I had a lot of requests for just a super simple beginner friendly zipper pouch that will be coming soon. It's not live yet, but I am gonna give you a little sneak peek. So I made this cute little zipper pouch using poppy cotton fabric, and then we did do the, um, tabbed zipper on there because I had some requests for that. And so this is so easy. I mean, you can really put this together in like just a few minutes. Honestly, it is fully lined and I just have this nice cute pink zipper. A lot of questions on where I get my zippers. I actually bought a huge pack of zippers on Amazon and they came in like a rainbow variety of colors. And so I still have a whole stash over there. And every time I do a project, I can just go over and just grab one that matches. So that's where I got my zippers from. But of course you can get them on Etsy or Fat Quarter Shop I think has zippers um, and I just get really long ones so I think I got ones that were 24 inches so way longer than I need for a lot of my projects but that way I have a lot of flexibility I could just cut them down to whatever size I need so anyways this will be coming soon again this was poppy cotton fabric it's really fun and this is just super easy so this is an upcoming tutorial you're getting a sneak peek stay tuned for this one all right, let's talk about cross-stitching because I have the classic stitchy ornaments and these will kind of match with my classic quilty ornaments. So here is what they look like. I used that same vintage trim as my hanger and then I found this cute kind of cottony lace that I put around the outside edge and then I just lined the back with some of my Christmas fabric from my stash. I think this is a sweet water print, um, but you can you know use any fabric that you want. These projects are great for scrap busting, by the way, um, especially, you know, just these are like three and a half inch pieces, squares. And so, I mean, you can really just dig in your stash. They don't have to match. They can all be different. I used one fat quarter for the backings for this, so they all have the same, but you could definitely dive in your stash bin and just make all your backs separate. So anyways, this is what the stitchy ornaments look like. I will insert some video here so you can see every single one of them and what they look like. Again, with like the ornaments, there are 12 different ones. Each ornament is unique, so they're all different. I stitched mine on Witchelt 14 Count Ada in the colorway Beautiful beige. It's just a nice beige colorway and I thought that would really make the white in those ornaments pop. 
Here's what it looks like. I got a piece that is 18 by 25. That will be plenty for all 12 ornaments. And I got mine at Fat Quarter Shop. I will link that below. Um, they also have the DMC floss there that you're gonna need. Everything that you need is included in the pattern. And I think I also put it in the store listing so you can get your supplies at the same time you get your pattern. That way you'll be ready to go when your supplies get there. So anyways, very cute. I'm loving these ornaments. I hope you guys do too. We are gonna do what we did last year, which is a uh, sew along and a stitch along. So one day we're gonna do a quilty ornament, the next day we'll do a stitchy ornament, and then a quilty ornament and a stitchy ornament. And we're gonna be doing that. I think I'm gonna start it actually a little bit earlier this year. Last year we did it in December. Um, I don't know, what do you guys think? Leave me a comment below. Would you like to start it sooner, like in the middle of uh, November maybe, so that it's ready, um, like middle of December? Or do you want your last ornament to kind of be ready on Christmas Eve? I don't know. We did it last year starting December 1st and it was kind of fun. Um, I know a lot of you guys stitched along and sewed along with me, so that was a lot of fun, but I know people are wanting them ready beforehand too. So let me know in the comments below if you'd like the stitch along to begin in November or if you're cool with it starting on December 1st. So I am still knee deep in making my granny squares. I'm just having so much fun and I really just sit down when I have some time and just make granny squares. If I'm watching TV or whatever, so I have a whole little pile here going. And I actually recently just got a new color, so I just got all my colors right here in my Amalfi tote. This tote is a free tutorial on my channel as well. I love this bag because it's nice and big. And as you can see, you can fit a ton of fun things in there. And I've been waiting on this denim color. I got this recently, so now now I'm having fun making more squares um, using that new color. The All of this yarn is Chunky Thread. This is by Lori Holt and I got mine at Fat Quarter Shop. These skeins are really tiny. As you can see, they fit right in my hand. So just to be prepared, when I got them in, um, I was kind of surprised at how small they were. So just something to be aware of. They are a size two weight. So just something to be aware of. They're a lot thinner than I was expecting when I got them, um, but they are so much fun to work with and I did start adding in that nice dark blue color. Now one of the things I've been working on is um, another bag project and so I wanted like a big huge granny square um, and I think I showed this last time um, but I have made a ginormous granny square and this is going to be one side for a bag panel. So I'm going to have this one. There's going to be, um, I think I'm going to do this blue around the outside of it as well and then I'm going to do white around the outside of it. I'm going to make some skinnier panels for the side and then I need another one of these for the front of the bag. Now, the only thing that I'm not sure of is I don't know if I like the color gradient that I was going for on this. I don't think it uh, worked the way that I thought it was gonna work. Um, and so I don't know if I love how this looks. So it's possible I'm gonna rip this out and um, just do something a little more random color wise like this. So leave me a comment below letting me know, do you like this gradient? Should I kind of rip it out and be a little bit just more scrappy with my colors? Um, or should I have this on one side and something completely different on the other side so I don't have to rip this out? Um, I don't want to rip it out. <laughs> I'm just not sure I love it. The other thing I could do is just make two more panels that are scrappy colors like this one for the bag and save this one and make this into another pillow front. So that's also an option. Um, I just wasn't loving this. And I had originally put this gray around the outside edge of it, but I really did not like that. So I think I'm going to do the blue around the outside edge and see if that helps. I just wish I had this before so I could have done a pop of that blue down here in the middle. So not 100% sure. I don't love, love this. Um, so I don't know. Let me know if you have any tips on how I can use this um, in the comments below. The first project I made with them was this fun tote bag. And this was a tutorial as well on YouTube. And I did show you how to join the squares for this. And I still had a ton left over. And so I was like, what should I make? What should I make? And so I decided to go ahead and do a pillow. So I think the pillow turned out so cute. Now, one of the things I wanted to do with this pillow was I wanted to make this um, washable and also removable so that you can A, wash it, or B, just store it flat. So um, I said, I think in the video, that I have a couple of these pillow forms and I change out the covers on them for the seasons. So I store all of my pillow covers nice and flat and then whatever season is, I can just pull that out and put it on the same pillow. So I don't have like a million pillow forms in my house. So this one is actually got a zipper closure on it 
which makes it super handy. Um, and you can just take this off, take out your pillow form. You can wash it. Um, I recommend hand washing these um, just, you know, just cause they're kind of delicate. Um, but you can wash them or you can just store it flat so that as the seasons change, you can swap it out. Now this one's kind of not really seasonal. Of course, it's just all fun colors. So you can have this out all year long, but I did want that flexibility. And I also, like I said, wanted to be able to wash it. So this is a free tutorial. It's on my channel now. I will make sure to link it below, but this is just called my granny pillow and I love it. It was so much fun and it's a great way to use up those granny squares. So if you're following me on Instagram, you know that I have been working on the twisted t-shirts. This is a pattern by Little Wolf Knits and they're just these really cute knit shorts. Now I'm trying to make mine a little bit baggier because I don't want them quite so tight like what she's wearing there. Um, but I thought it would be fun. I've never knit shorts or, I mean, aside from socks, I haven't knit anything for like the lower half of my body. So I thought it would actually be a really fun project and they have been so fun to work on. It matches this bag that was given to me by a friend. So this beautiful pink bag and it just so happened to match my knitting project perfectly. And so of course I was like, yes, I will take it. Thank you. It's beautiful. So here's what the shorts are looking like. Now I actually finished my shorts and the space from here to like your crotch area was just too short and I tried them on myself and all three of my daughters and they were really just super low rise for everyone and no one was really like excited about wearing them. So unfortunately I ripped out the legs. <laughs> so I have already re-split for my legs here, um, but I ripped out both of the legs and just pulled it right back up to where I was still, you know, knitting in the round and I added a few more inches to it. And so hopefully that is going to make them a little bit more wearable. So I love this yarn. It's really cute. And I don't know if I showed it on a podcast or not last time. Um, so if I didn't, I will share the yarn here in just a second, but aren't these adorable? And they're actually, even though they were too like low rise, they were super comfortable. So it was, you know, as much as it hurt to rip out the legs, it was like, I actually really wanted to because I really want to wear these. They are so soft and comfy and just squishy. And so I didn't want them to just be done and no one ever wore them. So I think it was worth it to rip it out and, and just make them a little bit longer. Hopefully they'll fit better. So here's my yarn for this project. So I just got a plain kind of creamy color for the ribbing and it's just this, it says RSS solid. This one is sport weight, I believe. And the other ones are fingering, but so far it's actually working out pretty good. This one is just in the color natural. So, and then this one right here is by Legacy Fiber and it is their macaroon colorway and I'm not sure if they still dye it or not but it's just a really nice subtle colorway and I decided to alternate skeins between that one and this pinker one over here this one is by western sky knits and it's in the colorway dainty which she does not dye anymore which I apologize I've had this in my stash for a little while but it's just this beautiful fun pink and it's got a couple pops of like blues and purples. And then I did wanna share this handy little tool that I just got. This is actually a clover stitch holder. So I'm using that to actually um, hold these stitches for the leg that I'm not working on right now. And so they're really cool. So it's just this thin little cable and it's got a little tiny needle on it and then it has a stopper on one end and you just slide all of your stitches that you need held onto it. And then when you're um, done, you can just slide this needle through the stopper just like this and then it just holds your stitches. I really like this because I feel like this is a little bit more secure. I used to either use another piece of yarn, which makes it harder to get those stitches on and off. This will this will make it really easy to get the stitches back on to my um, needle when I go to pick them all up. And so I am actually really loving this little setup and I feel like my stitches are nice and secure and I'm not worried that they're gonna come off. So that was a Clover stitch holder. Um, definitely worth it, it was only a few dollars and I think that really helps. For the project itself, I'm actually using my Chow Gu needles. These are the red lace. They are my all-time favorite um, cord. And one of the things when I was very beginning knitting was I had a really cheap pair of circular needles and the cord was horrible and it did its own shape and I was trying to knit something in the round and it was like twisting and turning and I literally hated it and I'm like why do people even like knitting this is a horrible experience it also made it really hard just to 
get my needles to work because they were just being pulled in different directions. So if you're struggling with knitting, I definitely suggest going for something a little bit more. I mean, these are a little bit more expensive, but honestly, they are so worth it and they really make your knitting experience just a lot better. So that is what I am using and I love them. I will make sure to link them below. I do have an interchangeable set, but you can buy them one needle at a time. So you can just try them out by one pair of needles. I think one pair is like maybe $10 or something. Um, and just try them out and see if you like them. But I think you're gonna love the cords because they're so easy to work with. The needles are also nice and sharp, but not too sharp that you're hurting yourself. Um, I just, I love them the most out of all the needles that I have tried. So anyways, here they are. And you do this cute little, I cord for the tie. This is a folded hem top. I don't know if you, is that what you call it? A folded top. Um, and then you join it together and then you start knitting your shorts. And so I think they're gonna be so cute. And then they're gonna have that same ribbing down here on the bottom of the legs once I uh, get my legs done. So anyways, these are really cute. I will show them to you once they're done. Make sure you're following me on Instagram because I am posting progress on this there. Um, but it's actually a really fun knit and my daughters love them. So if we can get the sizing right, um, it's possible that I'll be knitting another pair because they're just so much fun. So here is my little project. It matches, it's fun. I also have these cloud shoes, which I got online after watching like a million different, you know, ads pop up for them. And I've gotta say, they match my bag, they match my shorts, they match my shirt. I'm like all pink. So they're super cute. <laughs> I'm loving these. Um, these are kind of my inside shoes though. I don't wanna wear them outside and ruin them, but they're super squishy. They're like walking on a cloud. So if you haven't tried them, thumbs up. So the next fun crochet project I've been working on are crochet pumpkins. I had a few requests from you to do a pumpkin tutorial. And so I was like, you know what, why not? They would be so fun to make and they're really, really easy. So we have these adorable crochet pumpkins all over our house now. And as you can see, I mean, they're just so cute and they are really beginner friendly. So if you haven't done any crochet or much crochet, I definitely ch um, recommend checking out the video because they're really beginner friendly and super fast to make. And you can make them in a variety of sizes. I actually did mine in three different sizes. So there is a small, a medium and a large size. And then I even did this kind of a jumbo one. So the pattern itself includes small, medium and large. Um, and then of course, if you use different, depending on the yarn that you use, um, your pumpkin size will change as well. I used this Wool Ease yarn by Lion Brand. This is super bulky. And so it's a weight six. And so they're the pumpkins that I have are super chunky, um, but I love it because I think it really gave them a lot of texture and it just kind of makes them feel a little bit more solid. Um, the colors that I used are Starlight, this kind of white one, Succulent, and then Mustard. And so I just thought those were really fun colors. Um, and I did go for this kind of succulent aqua -y color because it matches all of my fall quilts as well. And so I thought, you know what, that's kind of the vibe I have going in my house. So I went for these three colors. Now for the pumpkins, you can get one pumpkin out of a skein, one of the large pumpkins. The medium pumpkins, I feel like you could get about a pumpkin, like one medium pumpkin and then maybe one small. And the small, I think we could get probably maybe two or three small pumpkins out of the skein because here is what I used. This is a brand new skein and I really still have quite a bit left. That large pumpkin uses a lot and crochet uses more yarn um, just in general. So um, it kind of depends on the yarn that you choose though. So I used that super bulky. I also used a Clover Armoire hook um, in size N which is what the yarn called for and I think they just turned out really fun. I use cinnamon sticks with a little bit of twine on it for my um, stem and I didn't attach them, but you definitely could if you put a little bit of hot glue right there on the end and then just stick them in, um, it'll secure them. I actually don't do that mainly because I wanted to be able to stack them if I wanted or not stack them if I didn't want to. Um, and so that made it a little bit more flexible. And then also for storage reasons, these sticks are just kind of snaggy. Um, you know, they're hard, they're cinnamon sticks. And so I just put these in a little baggie and then I can store my pumpkin separately and kind of you know wrap them in some paper or something so they don't get snagged in my storage. So twofold on why I didn't attach my stems, but you definitely could if you wanted to. And again, you can totally change how fat around your pumpkin is by just how many rows you add to that crochet panel. So lots of fun things that you can do with these. I hope you guys enjoyed this one. This is probably one of the more fun tutorials that I filmed because they're just so fast and easy and you can do different colors, different sizes, and they just come together really quickly. And and again, like I said, they're super beginner friendly. So what's not to love? 
All right, let's move on to some of my what's new at Fat Quarter Shop slash acquisitions because I do have a, some fun new things to share. So I've been seeing these on a lot of different websites and I was like, do I bite the bullet? Do I buy them? Do I not? I decided to do it. So I did get a set of the Tula Pink limited edition black and gold hardware set. This set includes an eight inch fabric shear and a six inch straight scissor. Um, and I have taken these out. I wanted to leave them in the tin for this video so you can see them a little bit better. Um, but look how pretty those are. Can we just talk about how awesome Tula Pink is with her hardware? So these are a little bit pricey. They were about $75 for the set. I will say that I have pulled them out. They are amazing quality. The scissors are super sharp. They're just nice and smooth to use. And um, oh my gosh, I kind of, they've been sitting in this since I got them because I didn't want to um, you know, just <laughs> get them all icky <laughs> while I was waiting to film. But now I'm sort of afraid to take them out of here. I'm sure I will and use them, but I did want to share them because they really are as pretty in person as they look on all of the videos. Now, I am a fan of her, um, the kind of oil slick hardware, the rainbowy color ones. Um, so I do have a couple things from that, but I just, I don't know. These were just like, look at fabric only. <laughs> Not that my kids are going to read that and pay attention, but they're super heavy and listen. Yeah. Um, I mean, but gosh, look at them. They really are awesome. So I just wanted to share those because I have been dying to show these to you guys and it just took me a little while to film this podcast. And so anyways, now I can use them and just enjoy them, but I don't know, they might stay in this little tin for just a little bit longer, so I don't ruin them. Um, but yes, I'm super excited to have those. So the next thing I got, and I got one of these in my sew sampler box, and this is Nantucket um, Summer by Camille Ross Kelly. This is her first line, I think, um, from since her mom retired. I could be wrong about that, but look at what fun colors these are. And I did get these, it has this lovely blue shade to them. Jax has been laying on here, so if you can see furs, that's why, so I apologize, I have to like, roller all of my fabric before I use it. Um, but anyways, it's so pretty. So I wanted to do a layer cake quilt and I thought, okay, I need more. <laughs> so I have grabbed another layer cake. So I have two layer cakes. And then for the backing for that, I don't know what the pattern's gonna be yet. It will be coming soon. This should be a tutorial here on YouTube. I was wanting to do something easy, layer cake friendly, um, and just fast. So um, for the backing, I did get another one of the prints from the Nantucket line. This is um, the blue, I don't know what it's called. I'll try and put it on the screen here, um, but it's just like a nice blue kind of check. And I thought that would just be a really fun backing for it. And then because I love this <laughs> so much, I thought, you know what? I need a little project bag out of it as well. So I did get a little tiny mini charm out of that. And this is probably gonna be a drawstring squishy bag um, sometime soon. And if I have enough fabric left over from my backing, then maybe I'll use this for the lining. But if not, I have enough Bonnie and Camille fabric that I can, I'm sure I can match a binding and, um, or like a lining for a bag. So anyways, I'm really excited about this line. Um, it really is just so pretty. And at first when I saw it, I was like, oh, I don't really wanna do a just all blue and green quilt. Um, but the more I looked at it, the more I thought, you know, that actually does kind of match the vibe of our main house. Um, it's just a little bit more kind of plain neutrals. And then I do have pops of blue in here um, just because we live by a lake. And so I kind of tried to bring that inside the house. So I think this will be just a really nice color to throw maybe on the couch um, or something like that. So keep an eye out for that. I haven't exactly decided what I'm gonna do on that um, yet, but I'm sure it'll be fun, whatever it is. The other thing I got is one of their tote bags. This is the Bonnie and Camille um, Quilting Bee Tote Bag. And again, I actually, Jack's fur, <laughs> anyway. Uh, this tote is actually really good size and then it has this aqua lining with a zipper inside. And so this is perfect for carrying your quilting projects to retreats um, or, you know, putting knitting projects or crochet projects or stitching projects or any projects in and just taking with you uh, when you go to those um, fun little meetups with your friends. The other thing I thought would be sh uh, fun to share is my Sweetwater tagged label. So I am part of their monthly subscription and each month you get a different label sent that is personalized. So this is the most recent one. Now they're all, 
sometimes they're like a big label like this. Sometimes you actually get like two labels on here. Sometimes you get three of them. They kind of vary on a size and they usually are semi-seasonal. Um, so like probably a Thanksgiving or kind of fall one will be coming soon. But this is the one that we got just most recently. And so I thought I'd share it with you because I always get asked about the labels on my quilts and I'm part of that subscription. I love it. They always send really cute labels. And then I do have some new Fat Quarter Shop stuff to share. So they did recently put out some new pa uh, foundation paper packs. So this one is the one and a quarter by two and a half flying geese unit. This one is the five inch square in a square. And then this one is the six inch square in a square. So I will be giving away all three of these to one of you guys today as a giveaway. The uh, other thing they sent me is this Santa Claus type fake cross stitch. And uh, this will also be a giveaway. I think this one is really cute. And I think they have, I saw some with other um, seasons. So this one is obviously the Christmas one, but I'm pretty sure I saw a fall one and I can't remember what they, what which ones they had. So those are really fun. So that will be a giveaway giveaway. The other new pattern they sent me was the Marcel quilt pattern. It comes in four different sizes, throw, twin, lap, and queen. Um, and so this is just a really fun star pattern. This is put out by It's So Emma Publishing. It's by Crystal Stahl. And then the last thing I have, and this will also be a giveaway, <laughs> is the Be In Your Life 2023 planner. And this year, this year they did the pink. It's a nice Kind of fabricy feeling but also thick cover it has a nice spiral binding on the side of it and then on the inside we've got some note pages and then each month has a little tab here they have a full month overview and then weekly planning pages as well and every month is pretty much the same from there on out you've got your full month overview and then your planning pages and then there is a note section at the end it is a half sheet planner size so this is like half sheet so like five and a half by eight and a half ish it might be a little bit wider um, than that but that is it and I actually use my own planners so I don't use these so I did want to give this away to one of you because I thought maybe one of you would love it and of course it comes in pink so what's not to love all right and then the last thing I wanted to share is another acquisition this is the project Sweetwater subscription box these come out quarterly um, so you get four a year and I don't usually do an official unboxing on my YouTube channel so I thought it'd be fun to share it here um, on one of my podcasts all right so this one includes all of this fun fabric two of these little fabric blocks which are for one of the patterns in there and we'll just go through it really quickly so it came with a snow kissed charm pack and this is their new Christmas line this year and if you have seen any of my uh other videos or my Christmas quilt haul, you'll know that I always use Sweet Butter fabric because they just have the most fun Christmas fabric around. So this one is adorable and those little houses, oh my gosh, they are so cute. It also came with one of their tagged labels and look at how adorable these are. Now the ones that you get in these boxes are not personalized, but they just are seasonal to match the box. So there are four different labels on this one, as you can see, and they are all cute. These are iron on labels, so you can iron them on. Or if you don't want to do that, you can actually peel the backing off of these and then just stitch them onto your quilt. I always iron them on and then stitch them on just because I figure, I don't know, it's extra secure. Oh no, that's just how I do it. It also came with two different panels. And so I think these are full yard cuts is what it looks like. Um, and the panels have four different fabrics on them. And then this one has just a white, like a white on white. And then here's the other panel. So it's got these fun fabrics on that side and then these on the other side. And then along with those, it's kind of like a project in a box. So you do get patterns for all of these four fun, pro fun projects. There's a mug rug, these cute little trees, which are what those wooden blocks were for. Um, you just f uh, cut these in fabric. And so there you go. And they also have a template for those inside. And then there's this cute little table topper and a little table runner. So in all of their boxes, it's basically like projects in a box. You get more than one project, you get everything you need to make those projects plus the patterns. So they're a lot of fun. They're a little bit more pricey, I think, than some other boxes, but they're only quarterly. And so far I've always really liked what's come in them. And then they put a little teaser for what their next box is gonna be. So I thought I would show that just in case you are interested. So there is time to still sign up for this one. And I think this one will come out in December. Uh, you can definitely still sign up for that. You can go to sweetwaterco.com. 
I'll also put a link for it below. And then I think you have to click on subscription boxes or something and it'll take you to there. Uh, they have different subscriptions. So it will take you over there and you can get all that information there. All right, guys, I think that's everything I have to share with you today. Hope you enjoyed this podcast. Now, like I mentioned, we will be doing a giveaway for the planner and the patterns that I showed from Fat Quarter Shop. To enter to win the giveaway, make sure to leave a comment below letting me know which one of my fall quilt patterns is your favorite. So a quilt pattern that I have designed. So you can do Oh Hey Pumpkin, which is top of the ladder, Farmhouse Fall, lower ladder, or Vintage Fall on the wall. And then if you've made any of those, make sure to leave what fabric line you use to make them. I would love to hear what you guys are using with my patterns. And then also you need to subscribe to my channel and like this video and then US only. I'm sorry, but shipping is super expensive right now. So I have to come, I just have to keep it in the United States. So good luck on winning some of the prizes from today's giveaway. If you do win, I will reply to your comment here on YouTube asking you to email me directly with your information. I will ship the products to you. I will never ask for money. Please don't text anyone. Definitely don't send them any money. Uh, just email me directly if you won and I I will get your prize out to you. I don't want you guys getting um, scammed or uh, you know taking advantage of in any way. So I apologize. I know that happened on one of my previous videos and people were being asked to text a number and then pay for shipping. I will never ask you to do any of that. So please just email me directly if you've won or if you're curious if you've won and I will uh, make sure to get your prizes sent out to you and clarify any questions that you have. So that's gonna be it for today's video. I hope you enjoyed it. Again, if you did, please make sure to thumbs up and subscribe. That way. I know to keep making them for you. Thanks for hanging out with me today and I will see you next time. I also wanted to share my nails with you. Last year I did ghost nails. My daughter did them and everybody loved them. So I wanted to do them again this year. Um, I actually did this hand. She did this hand. Hers look a lot better, but they're still cute. This guy is upside down. No, he's not. Okay. Um, I've been adding, ugh. the one on the wall is my uh, vintage fall quilt. <laughs> Uh, before the uh, upcoming, oh, these are not what they're called. Oh, <laughs> never mind. These projects are actually really good for um, huh. airplane. Hello? Hey. What hey, are you doing? I'm filming a video. All right, say hi to the YouTubes. Hi, YouTube. <laughs> All right. All bye. right, bye. Is it though? <sighs> okay. Boop. <laughs> So the next fun crochet project that I have been working on crochet on are, I had a lot, stop dinging phone. The next crochet, that ah, crochet, that is such a hard word to say. Four inches, whoop, <laughs> I lost my stem. Sorry about the airplane. And the beeping, stop beeping. And then along with those, it's kind of like filming. We need to go. Go where? Time for your I know. Let me. I'm almost done. This is my last thing Jeff. to show. <laughs> no cap. <laughs>